أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار O oh Allah, forgive, forgive us. O oh Allah, protect us from the hellfire. O oh Allah, protect us from the heat of this dunya and the heat of the akhirah. O oh Allah, protect us from the zamharir. Zamharir is the cold, cold, cold weather from this dunya. And zamharir also, hellfire also has a cold, bitter cold. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the heat and from the cold period, from hellfire. Amin, ya Rabbal Alameen. We pray the same for ourselves, for our spouses, for our children, for our parents, for our family member, and for all the believers, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them, protects them, and gives them what they ask for, inshallah ta'ala, to be better. Better in a human being, better in iman, better in faith, better in indiv individual, and then, as collective, inshallah, better society. Amin, ya Rabbal Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm still using the book. Uh, I think I, uh, you know, I'm so in love with this book, Madaraj Salikin, but I wish I had the ability to translate as, you know, uh, someone who has a professional word. But I'll try my best. If I make any mistake, it's from me. It's anything was right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawfiq ala Allah. So I'm going to talk a little bit here about how when we have a sin and when we see other people committing sin, we become a loudspeaker. You could speak like, oh, so-and-so is making sin. Do you see that? She took her hijab off, for example. Or oh, somebody stopped praying. Somebody stopped practicing. Or somebody, for example, we catch them or we saw them that are you know, committing some kind of sin. Uh, then we use that as a gossip or we use that as to put them down or to, uh, you know, says, oh, my God, I used to love them. I, I used to look up to them. Now, what should I do? You know, they're just committing this kind of sin. So you you talk to them by the words that says, ayyert mean you make fun on them because they're now committing sin. Any type of sin, maybe catch them liar, maybe cheating, maybe fornication, God forbid, if it's you know major sin, even if it's a major sin. So especially for the brothers in Islam, the sister, the Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam, if we see someone else uh, having uh, doing a kind of sin uh, or a kind of uh, you know practicing something is not supposed to be, right? Doing something they're not supposed to be, we're not supposed to make fun on them. We're not supposed to talk about them. Why? Because the hadith here says, it's Akhrajahu Turmidhi, says, وَقَوْلِهِ وَكُلُّ مَعْصِيَةٍ عَيِّرَتْ بِعَيِّرْتَ بِهِ أَخَاكَ فَهِيَ إِلَيْكَ Any uh, a sin that, or disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you catch your brother Muslim or sister doing, you know that they're doing something to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you make fun of them, you're not going to die unless you commit the same sin yourself. That is very scary. I swear I got this hadith, you know, all day I was talking about it to my kids and they were like, explain, explain, I don't understand how. So here another hadith, it's also Rawahu Tirmidhi says, Man akahu If I make fun on someone who's Muslim, it's not the non-Muslim, who's Muslim, and I talk about them saying, oh my God, they're doing this kind of sin, or I, they, whatever that sin it says, لم يموت, that person will never die or they won't die unless حتى, حتى يعمله, till you make the same kind of sin. So why? The explanation of this hadith it says you don't know that that person who committed that sin and you saw them or you know you have a knowledge of that they're doing this kind of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they might make tawbah maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their repentance and then you end up with what? Your talk, your bad talk about them, or bad thinking about them, or bad wishing about them, or bad uh, gossiping about them. That's a, that's a sin you're gonna carry. And because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will flip your heart into doing the same kind of sin. 
I remember a uh, long, long time ago, you know, maybe my kids were very, very young. And we were talking also in one of the classes that they brought up this family, you know, their kids are not disciplined, their kids grown up, they're men and women, they're not, you know, coming with their parents to the masjid, they're doing whatever with their friends. And I'm sitting there says, oh Allah, oh Allah, protect our children, you know. How we guarantee that our son or our daughters when they're older, when they become the men and the women, how we guarantee that they will be the best example for the society, the best Muslim brother and sisters. We don't know. Only if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides them, not because we were very successful parents. You know, a lot of parents being blamed for their failure of their kids. If they're not failure, I mean in, in education, which is that's something else for the dunya. It's failure did not know how to let their kids, their kids going out with, you know, having girlfriend or involved in drug or whatever they're doing, or they're on the street, right? So we're gonna blame the parents. The majority of us would say, oh, the father is failure. The mother did not know how to take care of their kids. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an example from the Quran, how you know, uh, raising children, it's certain time, uh, it's not up to you anymore because they become adults and then become responsible about their behaviors. For example, the children of Yaqub alayhi salam, when uh, you know, we know the story of Yusuf, when Yusuf was a lot younger, and then the older brother who felt so jealousy about you know, the father being so close to Yusuf السلام, and they plan to get rid of Yusuf. So my, someone says, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Yaqub did not know how to raise his 12 boys. You know, you can't say that because he's a prophet. How we can say that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only Yaqub, Yaqub and his father Ishaq, Ishaq's father Ibrahim, all of them had come from a chain of prophethood and we accuse them that they did not know how to raise their kids. That's why don't speculate about anybody's kids. Later on, we know that uh, even uh, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, when he met his brothers, when he asked them to bring the parents and your family, all of them come from Palestine, from the hardship life you have, all the way to Egypt. What did he tell them? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. Mean there's no blame on you. He did not blame his brothers. He did not tell them once upon a time you were very bad. Now maybe Allah will forgive you if I make dua for you. I became a prophet now. Allah preferred me. You know, never, never he took the 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 that he, he didn't show off. That's why uh, described Yusuf السلام, over and over and over in the surah that he was from the muhsineen. Muhsineen means the righteous, beautiful, kind person. You know, to be righteous is different. To be muhsin is a higher. To be muhsin means you do not complain about hardship come on you. You do not accuse other people for hardship fall on you. You do not call other people are bad. You just, you know, take, you might say, oh, Allah protected me from making, fornicating. He even, when he raised his hand and he said, oh, Allah, the woman of Al-Aziz and the woman in the town wants to have a fear with me. Oh, Allah, if you don't protect me from them, what did he say? I might do the same sin. They asked me to do it. Because, you know, if I depend on myself and then the shaitan, I might do the same sin. Oh, he raised his hand, he said, oh, Allah, protect me from them. He said, I am not saying I am the best here, the most righteous person in the nafs al in the soul. Your soul and my soul might take me to commit a disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe one day. So who, 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 who he gave, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, he gave that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept his heart on the straight path, even Yusuf will astray. This, Allah. That's why it says you cannot, you cannot, you know, I, I think this kind of sin we commit, we always talk, easily we speculate, so and so is family, like I said before, the kids no good, because the parents were not good, how do we know, especially when we have kids, then if your kids righteous, wait, when your grandchildren grow up, you don't know what they're going to do. You only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they do good, if they come to the Salat al Mustaqim, that is what Ihdina Salat al Mustaqim means. That's mean their dua, daily dua, that, oh Allah, guide me, keep me on the Salat al Mustaqim, give me the hidayah, give me the right path, and help me to follow 
You said that's what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help every day to stay on the Salat al Mustaqim. Just because I took today the Salat al Mustaqim does not mean I'm going to stay till I die. Because the Hidayah, I have to seek that Hidayah. I have to seek the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the day when the moment of the angel of death and the rest of the angel who they fly down from the heaven. They come and they say, If they tell me that, if they say, Madiha, no fear, no sad after today, you're dying, don't worry, your soul going to heaven, to heaven, that's the time you will say, Alhamdulillah, now I'm I'm going, I'm ending the good ending. That's Husn al Khatima. That's mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted all your good deeds and on the on the road you took or the age or the span, let's say you lived 60, 70, 80 years, during that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept you to stay on that surat al-mustaqim where you seek that guidance over and over again. And let's see another hadith here says, وَأَيْضًا فَفِي التَّعْبِيرِ ضَرْبٌ خَفِيٌ مِنَ الشَّمَاتَةِ بِالْمَعِيرِ If you accuse somebody that they're indulging in a sin, so uh, you are like uh, saying shamata mean oh yeah they deserve that. They're, they're not good family anyway they they you know run in their family but it's so easy we say it. i hear a lot in the Arabic term i don't know about the american culture how they do it it just goes so easy in people's mouth and it comes like oh yeah the I uncle like that the father like that the family it's, it's in the american the culture also Really? Amer American culture also, yeah, family. People, you know, say the good family, bad family, they label people. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, I never knew that. I never knew that. I know for sure in the Arabic culture or the culture I come from, when I hear, I always, always, if they see anything bad happening in a family, immediately there will maybe somebody from the uncle's side, he was bad or he died in a bad condition. They're gonna say, oh, it's, it's in the family. So once upon a time, the two boys of Abi Lahab, they became to Islam and they became a great Sahabi. And, um, uh, the daughter of Abi Lahab also, she became a very pious woman and she became a sah Sahabi and she did the migration. She did Al Hijrah from Mecca to Al Medina. And then the city, the ladies of the Medina, every time they read Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab bin Watab, they said, Oh, your father and your mother were cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that broke her heart. That very much broke her heart. Still, she knows that her parents went to hell. Indeed, the ayah is still valid. So she came to complain to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, you know, the women in the city, they're making fun of my uncles. And they say, you are the daughter of this. You know, in, in another way, uh, you're not being, maybe you're not also accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Astaghfirullah. Who, how do we know? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not give her answer, but he went on the member and he called the people for the salah. And during the salah, he said, what, you know, the adab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the manner of him, he did not say so and so say something bad to my cousin, which is she is his cousin, right? But he said, Ma qawm. what's wrong with some people who they hurt me? They hurt me personally when they talk bad and ill about my own family because Abu Lahab is still his own uncle. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about it and he knows indeed his uncle going to hell. But we don't have to shove it to his face. We don't have to, to, to shove it to the face of his son also. The son was Sahabi and the daughter, she, she became Sahabiya. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whatever hurts my cousin or my family, because the cousin is immediate family, whatever hurts her, it hurts me. If you want to hurt my family, also, talk bad about my family. So he, he forbid that and the people, you know, ask for, for Tawbah and inshallah ta'ala. So he teach us from this beautiful manner that we do not, uh, you know, take a blame or we say they deserve this. Shamata, shamata mean all who they deserve this. Let's say you're, you're upset about this family, uh, family members, especially family members, cousins, auntie, whatever it is. There is disagreement in the family. If something bad happened to them, you will say they deserve it. Allah hit them. And we think that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment start already in this dunya. How do we know that? Maybe that bad things happening to them, maybe it's a big reason for that person to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sincere tawbah. And their tawbah was accepted. 
We don't know. That's why it says be careful. So that is a ta'yir with them. And we learn that by reading Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, by reading Surah Al Fatiha. When I make the sincere hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm worried about my own soul. I'm worried about my own salvation. Yes, we are worried about children. Yeah, we teach them, we bring them up in, in, a, in, a, in a right way. But later on, at, you know, if I see they're doing bad, I'm not going to call them, oh, yeah, you're doing just like uncle side or family member. Even the mother when they're uncle, they're, uh, they're, they're upset. They blame maybe the husband or the husband blame his wife. We should not be doing that because it says even that might come back to you and you might commit the same sin and you'll know better than anybody else. You do your best and you the rest is you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to save you and save your family and your loved one and the Muslim and the believers from being uh, uh, in a such uh, sinful statement, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, it says, وَمَا أَحْدَثَ لَهُمْ مِنَ الذِّلِّ وَالْخُضُرْ وَالْإِزَاءَ عَلَى نَفْسِي وَالتَّخَلُصِ مِنْ مَرَضِ الدَّعْوَةِ وَالْكِبْرِ وَالْعَجَبِ So when you look at other people and you see them, they're committing sin, you might think, you know what, I'm better than them. I don't do that kind of sin. If you think that way, that's even worse because that's ujub. Now you lie to yourself. You put yourself above them, right? Because you don't know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal your heart. And you put yourself above them. You show yourself to yourself and to the others. That's ujub and kibr, right? Arrogant. You feel arrogant. You feel ujub. You know, you're, you like yourself. You like the way you, your iman level wear. And that's, it says, it's worse to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than someone who committed the sin and then, they became so humble and humiliated themselves. One night, they cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be cured from that sin they committed. Between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and nobody know how they approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They approach it with such a broken heart. And they cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over that sin they committed. Meanwhile, you think that you're better than them because you're showing off, you feel the arrogant, and you, you like the, your status. And this iman, you think your iman is so strong, you're protected. Okay, that's worse in Allah's eyes than someone who committed the sin, but then they cry over that sin and they humble themselves, they humiliate themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a broken heart. Okay, so that's why we have to be careful. We have to be careful how we judge each other. That's why it says, don't be a judgment, don't take the position of God. Don't say so and so going to hell. You don't know. You don't play God. Don't even play the you know the right uh, teacher because you think everybody that student know that student don't know that student gonna fail that student not gonna fail. Sometimes many times you know students turn around and you think they were failing period one period two maybe parking marking period one and two have the middle of the year and they flip right. And then suddenly these kids, not only they pass, but they pass with good grades. That happened with me many times. I have many students who they were, you know, trying to fail in the class in, in, in this subject and suddenly they changed and they became a very good students. The same, you know, uh, example to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala greater. And uh, maybe somebody's relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not that great, but maybe one of the Ramadan, one of the dua they made, one of the supplication they made, they made is accepted, then here you go now, they're in the tariq uh, al-hidayah, in the straight past, inshallah ta'ala. That's why it says, don't play God. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's going to go to hell, who's going to go to heaven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even, even the scholar, they say, if that's the case about a Muslim brother, Muslim brother and Muslim sister, how about the non-Muslim? We cannot accuse no one. We see them on the street. We say so-and-so going to hell. Look at the kuffar. They're all going to die and go to hell. How do we know? Look how many kafir come to Islam and they become our teachers. They become not only a good Muslim, they become our teachers. You know, wallah, once upon a time when we were in RIS, the convention, I think we counted eight of 10, they were just converts. And here we go, they come on the stage and they're teaching all the thousands of Muslim, who we all born in Islam, maybe one, two, one percent or two percent convert. The rest, we were born in Islam, like Islam, like we come from Muslim land, right? And who's our good teachers? There was the one who just convert. Subhanallah, we never know. So we, we cannot accuse anybody. You know, unless we, 
you know, even if they die, if they die kafir, who we are? We don't know what they did during the moment of death or just before the death or the night they were last night, last night they took, maybe they took the oath that they're gonna come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day, but they die. We don't know, we don't know. So it's better not to play that's a God's rule, inshallah ta'ala in this dunya. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the ayat it says, وَلَوْلَا أَن ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ كِتَّ تَرْكُنُ إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْئًا قَلِيلًا And that is in Surah uh, Al-Isra. What does that mean? Unless, Ya Muhammad, we helped you to fix your heart on the straight path, right? On the righteous straight path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitta tarkanu ilayhim shayna qalila. You will maybe take the side of the kuffar a little bit, compromise, compromise with them a little bit. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a righteous, as a good person he is, without Allah's help, he can't be on that straight path. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Then it says here, uh, when Yusuf, again, we, if we come back to Yusuf alayhi salam, his ayah, in the last, in the end of Surah Yusuf, says, Oh Allah, if you do not take me away from the woman of the town, who they all want me for my good looking, right? Oh Allah, take me away from them. Otherwise, I might become ignorant. I might become, you know, liking what they want from me, right? So he, he did not get it. He did not say, oh, I'm the son of the prophet. I'm the grandson of the prophet and messengers of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I come from this lineage. I will never do that. He didn't say that. He said, oh Allah, if you do not protect me, if you do not guide me, if you did, did not take me away from this community I'm in right now, that's why he preferred to be at the jail rather to stay in the town and the woman of Al-Aziz after him, then when the woman of the town saw him as good looking as he is, attractive as he is, he said, oh God, take me away from him. i rather stay in jail, stay away from this nonsense. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua and he went to jail. La ilaha illallah. That is... That is, I mean, who would ask for such dua like that? Who would rather stay in jail than uh, become a famous, right? Today, look at the people, how easily they become famous. They could do fornication, oh my God, rich and famous. And uh, this man attracted, uh, you know, they put their pictures, uh, the most attractive man or the most attractive woman in the, in the community or in the society or in the country or in the world. Look all the nonsense we see today, right? In magazines, in Hollywood, la ilaha illallah, the prettier girl, they are more wanted, are more uh, often divorced and married because this dunya, it's, it's just like they love her, they love that kind of, of uh, uh, being, uh, being famous and being recognized in their community. That's how we become, that's what I was shaitan and in nafs, that's what soul wants, that's your nafs wants. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us inshallah ta'ala and it, that's why uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he always said uh, if the prophet wants to swear he swear no la wa muqallib al qulub mean he swear in the one who turn and flip the hearts and who flip the hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being in the righteous flip to be being in a sinful heart only in Allah's hand that's why al-qalb bil-arabi qalaba means flip. Al-qalb means the heart is so easy to flip. You know, uh, your heart, I want this, no, I don't want that. Today I want this, tomorrow I want that. You're in, into all the, in the hesitation. Should I do, should I don't? Uh, help me to choose what I want. Especially if you have khiyara, if you want to choose about among some so many options in, in your life, right? Your heart is not, cannot just say, khalas, this is what I want. That's why, you know, the hadith says, go do istikhara, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you to select what's the best for you. And here the hadith says, وَقَالَ مَا مِنْ قَلْبٍ إِلَّا وَهُوَ بَيْنَ إِصْبَعَيْنِ مِنْ أَصَابِعَ الرَّحْمَانِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنْ شَاءَ أَنْ يُقِيمَهُ أَقَامَهُ وَإِنْ شَاءَ أَنْ يُزِيغَهُ أَزَاغَهُ There is no thing, there is no heart. The Prophet says, there is no heart 
unless that heart between two finger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, hashallah, I'm doing my finger like this, it just into a finger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Asabi al-Rahman, the merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, insha'a an yuqimahu. If Allah wants to keep your heart on a straight path, he will keep it straight, iqama means straight, aw insha'a yuzirahu. Or if Allah wants your heart to zir mean, it's just stay away from the straight path. Like, like uh, the uh, people of uh, Bani Israel, uh, they say, uh, uh, we cannot come to the Hidayah, Ya Musa, as much as you tell us, as much you want us to be guided. Our heart is just designed to be always astray. So they, they're putting the blame on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made our heart to go always in a wrong way. So try, try your best. Do whatever you do, Ya Musa, it's not gonna work. That's what they say. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? If they think their heart was guided to the wrong path because they wanted the wrong path, they put their eyes away. They don't want to fix their eyes on the steady path. They don't want to stay on the steady path. They put their eyes right and left. Then what happened with their heart? Went right and left with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. So you start first and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to the path you choose. You choose the Sirat al-Mustaqim, he will guide you. You choose al-Turq al-Mutafari'a, the exits are, or those exits are the Dakhil al-Shaytan, the exits where the Shaytan shows you and your, yourself shows you. Those are the other exits. If you want to choose that too, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you. Just go ahead, take. You want to take that? Go ahead, take. Bismillah. He's crying too much, my oh God. So Maqal, and he says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made the dua. He said, Allahumma muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala dinik. Oh Allah, the one who fix hearts, fix my heart on this sirat al-mustaqim, on this deen, on this religion. Allahumma musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qulubana ila ba'adik. Oh Allah, the one who flip the hearts to pay attention on wasting time, in, you know, doing haram, uh, doing other things where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with that act. If that's what you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take your heart, your time will be so busy. I don't have time to pray. I don't have to attend any classes. I don't have time to go to the masjid. I don't have to, time to hold the Quran and read. I'm so busy. So because your heart is now divided into so many things and you put in your heart all hubb dunya, the love of this dunya. I want my education, I want my job, I want to do vacation. Oh my God, summer come. All I do is just go education. When summer finished, people go back to their work, yeah. right? time of vacation is over now i'm i'm working when when you think you're gonna come and uh, you know choose the right path when sometimes you know we have to remind ourselves when by the time we say tomorrow 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 that person dropped dead you know how many story i just heard this week alone that young people died this lawyer and family in in jordan he just came home and his house was set on fire we don't know the reason five of his children died in that house immediately is a fire. And two brothers in Syria, who we know them, their family also, uh, there's a, a pipe of, of the gas exploded in the house and the two brothers, one died immediately and the other one died after they rushed in the hospital in a few days. I mean, those guys mid theories. So uh, in Paris, and I think last Friday, two young boys who they graduated two years ago from tech, from Pacific County Tech, and the two kids are Muslim, and resident of Paris, and they have on Little Falls car accident. I don't know if you read about that. And the two boys having the best car, Mercedes Benz. I don't know what happened. I don't know how they were driving. Both of them 19 years old. One go to MIT, uh, Massachusetts Engineering Technology, and the other one is somewhere in California, Engineering Technology also, right? Uh, they were top line graduate in tech. Both of them have car accident. One died immediately. The other one did not reach the hospital. They took him to the hospital and he did not reach and he died. Both of them 19 years old. So that's why when sofa at tasweef in Arabic, when I say, I will, I will, I will go to Hajj when the time comes. I will do this. I will do the khair. I will do that. I will do charity after I pay my bills. I will, I will help others when I finish taking care of myself and my family. So we always push any good deed come to our face. We push it away because we're so busy doing whatever we do for this dunya. So we have to be careful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, one day your heart is 
so deviated from Zirat al-Mustaqim, it will be impossible even to come back to Zirat al-Mustaqim. Khatam Allah ala qulubihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might put seal on your heart. The way he puts the seal on the heart of Abu Jahan, Abu Lahab, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again, and his wife, Jamila, or, or Ummu Jamil. So both of them, their hearts were sealed because whatever they were doing against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accuse him with all the bad accusation, they reached that limit for their heart to be sealed. They could, after the ayah of Al-Masad came, they could come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, oh, uncle or you know, nephew, uh, my God, this surah scared us. Uh, it says, oh my God, me and my wife, we're gonna be in hellfire. Oh, yeah, Rasulullah, we wanna, we decided to make tawbah. Uh, you know, please, you know, ask your Lord to forgive us. What should we do? Maybe, maybe if they cry over their sin, they can. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, you know, take this ayah and abrogate it. Khalas, it will become, become mansukh. But till the end of the judgment day, we're reading tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab. Why? Because they, they became more enemy after the ayah came. They became more enemy. So that's why their heart was sealed. يعني they're not going to come make tawbah. خلاص. Now let's talk about says maqam uh, tawbah. Okay. Um, so maqam tawbah means the station of the repentance. So how we make repentance then? If I can make fun on somebody else's sin, if I do that and thinking myself I'm doing the righteous, that's itself, it's a sin. So that means I need to make tawbah by accusing others doing the sin. That itself needs tawbah. So we have to make that a sincere tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that will elevate you. And every time, bil muhasaba, mean you take yourself to account. You're busy with yourself. You're not gonna see some other people's faults. And if people come and say, did you hear about so-and-so? You're gonna say, who's that person? I don't know, I don't care because I am so sinful. I'm so busy asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala myself to forgive me. I'm so busy for taking care of my own self, disciplining my own self. I don't have time to discipline others and talk about, right? It says, uh, if you're thinking you wanna sit and count uh, so-and-so's faults, you have your own faults. Sit down and count your own faults. Count your own shortcoming. And on the top of that, make your own tawbah, make your own istighfar. And we learn that from adab and the manner of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The companions, they said, we never saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa around us when he is around us, that he will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawbah and forgiveness. Maybe he will say, astaghfirullah al-azim, astaghfirullah al-azim. As long as he's sitting, if he's not saying anything else, he's making tawbah. He's making dependence because he said, no one will enter paradise without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how are you gonna reach the merciful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come on you when you're thinking yourself, you're already set up, you're good. You're going to heaven. You're, you're Muslim, khalas, you did shahada, you're so good, your parents, your family member are no good. They're gonna die, you're so worried that they're gonna die, they're gonna go to hell. You're not worried about your own sin. Just because you made tawbah one day, just because you did shahada one day, just because you're born in a Muslim family one day does not guarantee you that you are or already in the straight path. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not accept all your deeds? What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't uh, uh, put you in his mercy? Because the Prophet says, Wala amali, not even my deed will take me to paradise. Illa rahmatullah. Only the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come on you, when the angels come and they tell you guarantee now, you are in heaven, don't feel bad, no more sorrow, no more sadness after today. When they tell you that, those angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that then you guarantee yourself. I mean, look at the condition of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he was dying, uh, before he died, there is one of the uh, companions of uh, one of the Sahabi, I'm not gonna remember his name now, uh, I should write it down here. Uh, one of the Sahabi, he was Amin al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa mean the trustworthy of the Prophet. So if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wants to keep a secret, he will keep it with this Sahabi. So one day the companion knew that after so Surah Tawbah came down, 
the Prophet ﷺ, he took the Sahabi, Al-Amin, Amin al-Ummah, and he told him there's 12 names. They're living in the city of Medina, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the names to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Of course, Abdullah bin Ubay, everybody know he is munafiq. But beside that, there's 12 names. The name, names were revealed by Jibreel alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revealed the names to this companion and he told him, don't tell anybody. He's a mean, he's trustworthy. When Amr bin Khattab knew that, imagine, he went to him, he said, tell me, tell me if my name among them. And who's talking? The second Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, tell me, tell me, is my name in that list? Just tell me if my name, I'm not asking you whose name there. And uh, Amin al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, trust what he said, I can't. I can't tell you if your name in or not, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me, don't tell nobody, I am not, I am not. Then, uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq died, when Amr al-Khattab became Khalifa, that companion still alive, I mean, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's trustworthy, he called him, he said, I'm the Khalifa now, tell me if my name in that list, he told him, I don't care if you are the Khalifa to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am sorry, I am not going to break the promise I gave it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I cannot, I cannot uh, give you, I cannot give you the names, and cannot tell you, I cannot tell you if you name there or not. Guess what? Now, Umar ibn al-Khattab got poisoned, remember? He was playing Salat al-Fajr, and somebody you know, stabbed him with a sword from his back, and then he, he fainted, and then they took him to the house. He lived after that few days, and now he's dying. There's no doctors came, and they said, there's no way that the poison spread it in your heart, in your body. That's why uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab died shaheed. He received the honor of Martin, because even though he was not uh, even though he was not dying in the battle, right? He was in the in the Masjid of Rasul doing Salat al-Fajr as Khalifa, as Imam. While in his bed, death, and his, he know he's dying, he called his son, he said, go call Amin al, uh, Amin al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go call the Sahabi who know the names. And he told him, he said, Billahi alayk, I am not gonna rest, I'm dying, you know that. Just tell me if my name mentioned to you that I am one of the hypocrites. La ilaha illallah. Yeah, you're just reading that story alone. Where we are, we guarantee ourselves that, oh yeah, we are people of Jannah. We're walking here, we are people of Jannah just because we pray five times, just because whatever we think what we are. And now Amr al Khattab, this Khalifa, this man who we know that East and West was just opening with his command, right? He says, and while he was dying, he said, I, I just want to die with a rest heart. Just tell me if my name was mentioned. So you know what he said to his companion? He said, oh yeah, Omar, your name is not in the list. But for God's sake, don't ask me whose name was there. Then Omar ibn Khattab, he said, as long my name is not list, now I will die comfortably. I mean, this is a condition of Sahaba Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa How sincerely, when they make the tawbah, yeah, yani Umar ibn al-Khattab was all the sin he committed in Jahiliyyah. When he entered the Islam, he will cry, he will cry over the sin he committed because he did not guarantee that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. Even though it says he was one of the top 10 companions, al-Mubashirina bil Jannah. His name among the 10 people who they were promised to be in Jannah. Even though, even though he, his heart, it, it was so worried that would he enter paradise? Maybe he will enter to hell a little bit. Maybe he will come back to generator. He don't want to even go to, Jan to Jahannam one day. That's how the condition were the Sahaba, the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Abu Bakr al-Siddiq as sincere al-Siddiq, the truth teller, the, the one who, Bring yani, everybody was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though it says, uh, yeah. Yeah. He said, I am not going to guarantee myself that I enter paradise. Even my one right foot went to paradise, the left foot still outside the door of Jannah. I'm not going to guarantee that I enter paradise unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts my two feet in Jannah and close the door behind me. That's, a, that's why the condition of ibadah was a way more sincere and more 
uh, trustworthy than our ibadah, the way we, 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 you know, I speak for myself, the way we do our ibadah, comparing to the Sahaba and Rasul, even though those are regular men and women, they're not the prophets, they're not the, right? Amr bin Khattab, Abu Bakr Sadiq, they're, they're regular men. That's why it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, who asked to make the tawbah? He didn't ask the kuffar to make the tawbah as, as also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ All believers, come and make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't just say, O oh, kuffar, O oh, munafiqin, come make tawbah. The mu'mineen, the believers need to make tawbah. وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ This way you will be successful. That's what I'm saying. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ He puts the, in this life, there is two types of people. A group of people who they make tawbah all the time. They ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them all the time. And the other people who they don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them because they guarantee themselves to be forgiven. Those are humus zalimun. Those are the oppressor. They oppress themselves. Then just because you did not oppress somebody else, you're not oppressing yourself. There's a lot of people they oppress themselves because they cause to themselves to go to hell because the way they, they have ujub. They think themselves they're good, they're righteous. They're, they have, oh, they claim they have a right white heart. They say, we don't talk ill, we're good. You know, those people who always, if you tell them a little bit, come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will tell you, oh, my heart is so white. I am so good. They guarantee themselves that they're, oh, they're already on the silat al-mustaqeem. You don't have to tell me. That's how they think. If you think that way, that's number one it says. You have a kibriya or ajib. And if you think about yourself the righteous way, if you think you, if you claim that to yourself, you're making the sin itself. That's a sin. You need to make toba about that. You need to make tawbah to, to humble yourself and to humiliate yourself. And that's when, uh, you know, uh, they will ask uh, companions, a tabi'in, a tabi'in, uh, in the time of Ibn Taymiyyah, in the time of Abul Qayyim al Jawziya, with all the book they wrote, with all the guidance they show us how to be on the straight path. When they were dying, they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe I read Khatim Quran a thousand times, maybe I memorized the Quran, maybe I memorized all this hadith. What if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't accept this me from me? What if, I, what if I think I did it for myself, for me to become a famous? What if, even if the idea come in my mind, that's a big sin, then you erase all the good deeds you did it. That's how they were so worried about themselves. That's when Ibn Taymiyyah al-Ghazali, Imam Hamid al-Ghazali, when he left all the fame, uh, he was a very big teacher. He was the head. He was defeated all the philosophers, all the thinkers in the time of you know, uh, this debate in Morocco, in uh, Al-Andalusia, in, uh, uh, in uh, Baghdad, in Damascus. He will defeat everyone, whether they were Christian, Jew, Muslim, whatever it is. He would defeat all of them with all the knowledge he had. But later on, he said, you know what? Maybe this is will taking me to, to I, I, I never been defeated. Maybe this is gurur now. Maybe, you know, an undefeated person, you become undefeated person, you become the champion. You become the one, and, and uh, uh, you, uh, you know, just like, uh, I like what he said, uh, this boxer, there is a Muslim boxer, Al Khabib, the one from the Chechnya, the not Chechnya, from Dagestan. Uh, when he played the last, uh, the last uh, game, and he, uh, you know, became the world champion many times, uh, he never been defeated. Uh, so his mom told him, "For God's sake, I want you to have this your last game, and you're gonna quit after this." So his father died already. So to please his mom, he quit. And uh, I watched interview because he, my son loved him so much. I watched his interview. He said, uh, "I quit because not because I'm undefeatable. I don't consider myself. I am undefeated person." He said, "What if next year somebody become more?" better than me and he will defeat me and I become loser. How do I guarantee that? He humbled himself that much. He didn't even, and when he talked, he put his face, his eyes down on earth. And he said, 
who is the victory I have? It's not me. It's a victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's I, I just take the 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 successful it comes from Allah. It's a tawfiq from Allah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in this position for a reason. He did not say, I'm the one who's undefeated. You know how sometimes you watch the other wrestler, the people who when they talk, they they think they're you know, the lions are the best, are the best of the best, and this and that, the arrogant. You know, they say, you know, that field, it take a lot of, you know, boxing, whatever it is. But uh, subhanAllah, he humbled himself so much. He said, I, I'm not going to guarantee myself if I keep playing, maybe somebody, you know, down on the time, maybe somebody come will defeat me. So I'm not going to claim I'm the best. I'm not. Subhanallah. That's why we should not claiming ourselves with the best. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the believers to make tawbah all the time. And he said, the people who do not make tawbah, they are zalimin. So talk about two types of people. People who always ask for repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a tawbah, that's a istighfar verbally and in action. And people who they don't because they, they're arrogant even to say astaghfirullah or you're not sinful. I remember one, day, one time we were, uh, we were uh, with a group of other teachers and uh, I was saying, oh, for God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me. I keep saying, oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, forgive me. I don't know what was. We were just doing something. And uh, then one of the teachers, she told me, uh, are you that much of sinful, Madiha? I think I think the culture they don't know, or the way they 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 were raised, they think they are perfect, and they think just because maybe whatever the faith they have uh, will guarantee them to be. Some people they guarantee already paradise before they die. Uh, so uh, I have to explain to them that even while, while I am saying, oh, God, forgive me, maybe I am a sinful because there is a moment I did not say, God, forgive me. There is a time my heart maybe were in a, in a, in a different position. My heart was flipped, maybe loving the dunya. Uh, oh, I want this, I want this shahwa. I want my, you know, I want something my heart desire. And I, I wanted that. Maybe I, I couldn't get it because I married this man. I couldn't get that man because I married me. Just my heart thinking about it itself, it's a sin. Forget doing it, thinking about it. That's why you know your yourself surrounded with so much desire of this dunya, right? You're always in the battle with yourself. Forget others, forget the shaitan sometimes. You know, we blame the shaitan, we blame the shaitan, but yourself in the nafs al-amarat and the soul. Yourself, it has so much to like the desire. You love perfume, you love the lotion, you love the beauty, you love that. The, 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 the things that sometimes take you away of remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love to spend your time in, in other other than just you know doing righteous uh, when the time come oh my god i'm gonna get up and pray to look i'm so tired let me just pray to look and go back to sleep meanwhile you spend two three hours watching a movie with your family for example right we do that all of us may allah forgive us ya Rab. so that's why it says come back and always you have to be in a state of repentance with your tongue with your heart humbling yourself humbling yourself pushing fighting yourself fighting yourself instead of thinking self-esteem, you know? It's different than having self-esteem, than having self ghurur showing off. Yeah, I'm the righteous. Yeah, I'm the right one. I'm, I'm, the, I'm always right. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that, you know, right? I guarantee, I, I, I know this, I got this. That's how people talk. That's why we have to always humble yourself and we have to give the knowledge we have it it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you claim that knowledge to you, look what happened with Musa alayhi salam when he said, oh yeah, I got this. I'm the most knowledgeable person, right? We read Surah Al-Kahf today. And you say, you see what happened with Musa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him a lesson. Subhanallah, that's why we have to stay always in a state of tawbah. And it says here, Haqiqat al-Tawbah, the reality of Tawbah, it says, وَلَمَا كَانَتِ التَّوْبَةِ يُرُجُوَ الْعَبْدِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Tawbah means that repentance is coming back always to Allah. Tawbah, repent. Re repent means come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Admit your sin to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave Sirat al-Maghdub alayhim. There is a path of the Allah is anger on them. There is a path where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make people get lost for a reason. You're saved from this, you're saved from that. 
as long you are on a state of tawbah. Every time you say, oh Allah, forgive me, astaghfirullah al-azim, astaghfirullah al-azim, ahdina al-sirat al-mustaqim, astaghfirullah al-azim, Allah will keep you among those group who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an'amta alayhim, who Allah bless them, to keep them, till they die, till they die. Because you don't know, today you're driving in the right direction, you took one wrong exit, it might take you longer to reach your destination, right? So that's why he says, keep always saying, astaghfirullah, tawbah ya rab, tawbah ya rab, tawbah ya rabbi. That's because you're, you think you're, you're perfect, you're not gonna commit sin, no. Just to admit and to humble yourself because tawbah, well, istighfar is idlal, to humiliate yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And says, um, when you know that Surah Al-Fatiha, when you read at least 17 times a day when you pray, only for ayat, ilman wa shuhudan wa halan wa ma'rifatan, you know that you're seeking the guidance, the guidance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only way you stay on that by saying, astaghfirullah al-azim wa atubu ilayk, because if you don't seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawbah, you are going on the wrong way as uh, uh, in the ayah, surat al, uh, which surah is that? Number two, surat al-hujurat, ayah number 11. Woman lam yatub fa'ulaika hum al-zalimun. Those people who they do not make tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, consider them, they are on the wrong, they're doing wrong to themselves and they're doing wrong to others. So fil hidayah tamma in al-sirat al-mustaqim la takun ma'a jahl bizzan. I cannot be guided when I know, uh, I don't even know if I am sinful. Why? Because I don't, I don't know what's right, what's wrong. How do I know if I'm doing wrong? A lot of us, sometimes we find ourselves even, you know, we do salah and we make mistakes. Why? Because I didn't learn the proper way of salah. I didn't learn the proper way of doing wudu. I did not learn the proper way of doing the ibadah. Then I'm doing ibadah while I'm doing maybe bidah. <laughs> I was doing a wrong way. I was following somebody with no knowledge. So I was doing the sin. I didn't even know I was doing the sin. If I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not show it in the same way, that's an isti'ana. I didn't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a right way. What he wants me to do it, the way of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I'm doing wrong. That's itself doing wrong. That's why al-hidayah, uh, to stay on the sirat al-mustaqib, you have to know right from wrong. If you don't know right from wrong, how are you going to be? That's why alam, fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. It says it's commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge about the meaning of la ilaha illallah, it's obligation on all of us to know. What does la ilaha illallah mean? That's why as much as we spend time about the meaning of ibadah, the meaning of Allah, sometimes we forgot. Oh, I believe in Allah, but I worship somebody else. I have so many idols in my heart. Oh my God, I'm so busy, you know, with Instagram, with this, with that, with the family, with children. Oh my God, my salat is gone. Oh my God, my son is crying for, crying for our, I didn't even pray. Then you remember that you have to pray. Yeah, but your kids gonna take you away from that remembrance. Maybe your kids will become, Guided if you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a right time, in a right way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it will help the individual to solve your problem when you're so busy pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala itself. And sometimes we don't we don't think that way. We think, oh, I'm the only one who's gonna please the children. So I'm on the top of them. Meanwhile, I ignored my worship, my perfection. My ibadah, my salah, being on time or remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm thinking I'm taking care of my family. But if I really please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says Allah will help you, will help you for your life to run in a, in a best, in a better direction, subhanAllah. So if, if I think I am on the right path, meanwhile, I have no knowledge what is the right path, that's itself, it's not right path because you're ignorant. That's why it's obligation on all of us to learn this deen, to learn uh, salah, especially salah, ahkam salah, why we have to pray, why we have to, to dress up in a certain way, why we have to behave in a certain way, the good manner, the righteous things, right? If we don't know these things, people come to Islam and if they don't find the, uh, they call it the land, the land where they can flourish and they can grow, 
uh, then they hang with the wrong people, they're just misguided. Or they come to Islam thinking they came to the righteous way and they go to the wrong Muslimin. Maybe people of uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, because Islam is a Sunnah, is the right way. And there is many other Muslims, they call themselves Muslim, but they're having Turuq. Uh, uh, it's a different way than the Sunnah. Uh, it could be the Shia way, it could be the wrong Turuq, Sufism. I don't know. I, you know, if I open that door, we're going to sit and discuss what is Sufism then. But, you know, we know that so many other people, they come to Islam in a wrong way and thinking themselves that they came to this Islam, but they, they're in the wrong deed already. They believing in, 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 in a saint, so and so, Wali min awliya Allah will save their life, not, you know, holding on, Hablullah, uh, coming to Allah and being, that's why says stay with the righteous scholars, listen to the righteous scholars, go to the righteous masajid, where they're very well known, stick with them. Otherwise we will be misguided. You know, especially those people who they read Arabic and we hear so many, uh, even as Azhariya, they call it graduate of Azhar, they might come on the news and they talk, uh, this is the right way and that's not the right way. And they, uh, you know, talk about the rest of the scholars and people become confused. I don't know which way I'm gonna go, I'm so confused. Because their heart is what? Left to the desire, to the caprice. Their heart is not fixed to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people sometimes are looking for a way of, of somebody to tell them, oh, what you're doing is halal. It's okay. It's okay if you're not dressed up in a proper way. It's okay if you're indulged uh, doing uh, interest. It's okay if you're doing this type of job. It's okay. That's your income. And, you know, they give excuses. And some other people, they give excuses that when they come and they die, what do they say? Oh, we have Sadatuna, you know, our leaders, our <laughs> group, uh, the group of people I hanged with them. They all told me this is the right way. I followed them. Now they're fighting in hellfire. But is that excuse enough for them in the judgment day? If you say, oh, my boss told me so, I have to please my boss. Or let's say an army man. You know, the general told him, go kill the Muslim. And he went and he killed the Muslim. He didn't even know why he he's killing these people. Is that good enough to go in judgment day and say, you know what? My government asked me to go to the army and I was killing the people based on what they asked me to kill. Is that good enough in the judgment day? That's not excuse. The excuse is the poorest, it says, in, in judgment day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will tell them in the hellfire, shut up, you could scream, you could blame each other, you could fight in Jahannam, but the angel will tell them because you got uh, prophets, you got books, you got people who will guide you, you got people who reminded you what's the right path, you did not follow them. You could blame the society you grew up with, the leaders, the scholars who they guided you or misguided you then, you're in hell, that's not gonna help you at all. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, woman ya'tasim billah faqad hudiya ila siratul mustaqim. Sincerely come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an i'tisam. I'tisam mean you surrender your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Oh Allah, I don't know what's right with you. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenak. Oh Allah, you flip hearts. I don't know what's right, what's wrong sometimes. I'm confused. That's why it says, al-istikhara. Oh Allah, I ask you to fix my heart in the right way because I am really ignorant. I admit I am poor. I'm ignorant. I'm a jahil. I don't know. You, Ya Allah, save me, save me, save my family, save my children, right? Always, always come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is al-i'tisab billah. If you are in that condition, فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صَلَاةَ الْمُسْتَقِينَ And that's Ayah Surah Ali Amran, number 101. Those are the people who are on the Salat al-Mustaqeen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us in Surah Al-Hajj, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ الْمَصِيرِ اعتصم. الاعتصام, to me, I always, you know, thank, thank God and thanks to my uh, religious teacher, he used to think, he, he, I remember maybe 10th grade, maybe younger, uh, I loved that religious teacher, uh, Allah irhamu, he died later on, you know, he was one of our uh, Barilqa town, if any Circassian they know, it's Daz Dawood, he was my 
uh, high school religious teacher in, in high school. And when he say, there was an ayah, we have to memorize it, hold on the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, imagine there is a rope falling here and we all, we have to hold that because there's earthquake happening or is the flood coming. How are you gonna be saved? There is a rope falling off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just hold this tight, you will be saved. What will be our condition? Wallah, we all hold. God forbid, you know, there's a rope now falling here from if anything happening here or uh, maybe scorpion, maybe uh, instincts coming or something gonna, right? You jump and you hold on something or you jump you sit on some high, elevating yourself, right? You see that that fear you have that moment, that's al ihtisam billah. That's a condition we have to be in always. And some other scholar, he said also, I think this uh, came from uh, Allah yirhamu jawdat Sa'id. Uh, in his book, when he explained taqwa, the fear of Allah and the love of Allah, he explained it. He said, if you were sitting in a room and uh, then suddenly uh, you and your children and suddenly you see the mouse coming from the hole and that mouse, when they come, they're about to come, if the light on and the kitchen is busy, that mouse is not gonna come and, you know, mangling among, among you, right? Because that mouse will, if they're gonna come from one hole, they're gonna straight find another hole to hide. Why? They're afraid to get killed and catched. That's taqwa. That mouse has such fear in their heart to get killed, to get catched. They behaved in that way. And the scholar, Judah Said, he said, exactly you should be in that condition. Maybe I'm doing something, a kind of sin right now that Allah will seize me and catch me, then I will die in that state of the kufr. That's why it says the believers, when they're committing a sin, they're out of iman. They're, they're, they become bankrupt. They have no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remember the sin. They go, they do the sin because they're thinking about the happiness they're going to receive while they're doing that sin. God forbid, imagine somebody's doing good also. Or somebody's going, you know, flirting with men and women. They're in that condition, uh, touching, whatever, you know, the young kids there, they're doing stuff, right? In that moment, it says those people, if you if you remember even if you are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you that moment you won't do it you won't do it so those people they're not even aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but after they if they were believer after they do the sin that's when they feel sad they feel sorry they cry they promise I will never do that. The pleasure I have was temporary, but the pain I have after committing the sin, knowing that was a sin, the pain they have, they inherit it the rest of their life. And every time they remember it, they cry and they beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be sealed, concealed. Concealed mean uh, hide, right? They don't want people to know your fault. Oh, I would be so embarrassed if my friend fi find out I did that kind of sin, or my husband, or my son, or my father, or my family, or my friend, who they think, whatever they think. You're scared to be scandal in this dunya, right? You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, astur alay, astur alay, astur alay. Ya Allah, cover me, ya Arma. Allah, conceal my fault. Ya Allah, then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to conceal it even between you and God. And that's a sincere tawbah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he won't even reveal you in judgment day when that is al-afu that is not the forgiveness because forgive al-maghfira when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's say you committed the sin and you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you he forgave you and that's maghfira then when you go on the judgment day he's not going to call the whole world says so and so madiha committed the sin look at her now you have all the sin then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says i forgave you but even that between you and God, or between you and the alameen, ala ashhad al-nas, oh my God, I made that sin. Oh Allah, don't, you know, don't, don't scandal me. In judgment day, right? Just between you and God. Even between you and Allah, it says, your face will be so down. You're so ashamed. It says, your, the meat of your cheek will fall off. Haya'an min Allah. Because you're so embarrassed. That's, even though Allah forgave you and you went to Jannah. But al-afu, 
is different. That's why in Ramadan, in the Laylatul Qadr, when we say, Allahumma inna ka'afuan tuhibbul afu fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, you love to pardon. Pardon me, right? Because al-afu, it says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only forgive your sin, he quit this, he changed your sin into good deeds. And when you die, when he take you into account, he does not remind you a certain sin you made in that day. Why? Because he erased it from your book. Even that sin became a good deed in your book. That's al -afu. So always, always say, Allahumma inna ka'afuan tuhibbul afu fa'afu anna. Not only in Ramadan, you know. We know there is certain dua we make it in Ramadan in the righteous nights, in the very good time when we're breaking and we're past. But hey, regular, you know, then we need it. We need it all the time. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, protect us. Ya Allah, you know, uh, that is haqiqat al tawbah that is haqiqat al i'tisam billah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you hold on the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa mawlakum. He is the only one who is, you, you will be, uh, he will be your uh, mawla, mean he, he is your attorney, and he will protect you. He is the only one who will give you the victory. And Allah will give you the victory over yourself or over the shaitan who they are the two consider the two enemy of you. All right. Now it says here. فقد اجتمع العارفين بالله على أن الخزلان أن يكيلك الله إلى نفسك. Okay, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says al-khuzlan, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets you down and he lets you deal with your own self and he lets you listen to your own self, to your own desire, with the permission of Allah you do that, of course, because you can't do anything without the permission of Allah, right? We, as we are into al-qada, well, qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to be under the control of your caprice and desires, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left you between you and yourself. And that is a very bad condition person can be in. You feel into that fault. So Allah put you down. He let you down because you're listening to yourself. You're pleasing your desire. You're following your desire always. You know, if you have the two options, you pick, I want to fast, no, I don't want to fast. No, myself says, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Or I want to do this, I don't want to do that. I want to do the haram, I don't want to do the haram. I want to follow, I want, you know what I mean? You're into always into debate between you and yourself. Then yourself went over you. That's mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let you down. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you insist, if you insist of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Okay, by, by al Israr, you insist to stay in that condition you're in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe, maybe, he will seal your heart, even if you want to make tawbah, he won't even allow you to make that tawbah and come back to you. Because he gives you option and option and option, you open the door for you, suddenly you find righteous people, you hang with them, then, uh, no. then you go back to the wrong people who they, you know, don't encourage you to be doing the righteousness, they don't encourage you to practice, they don't encourage you to do this, they encourage you to, you know, come out, let's go for dinner, come out, let's do this, come out, let's dress up this way, behave this way, right? So you're just allowing yourself to be that way, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives you khuzlan. He said, uh, even if you want to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes very hard. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tawbat has shurut. So there is terms and condition for repentance. If you don't follow that, just by wishing, I want to make tawbah. Oh, oh no, Allah ghafur al rahim. A lot of people committing all the haram. And at the end of the day, they, they, those are the people who born into, into uh, 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 Islam. And they will say, Allah ghafur rahim. Allah will forgive me. Allah loves to forgive. But Sudir al iqab they don't talk about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will punish. When he punishes, he's severely punished. They don't, they, they don't remember the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Qahir fawq al-Ibad. And can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeat you? Yeah. He could defeat you and he could put you in hell. Who care? Allah is not going to care about you. He's not going to care about you if you don't care about yourself. If that's the path you choose, he's going to send you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, of all mankind, stop worshipping me, la ubali. Allah says, I don't care. Stop for Allah, Rabb. It's not, you're giving a benefit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making tawbah, but you're benefiting yourself. If you insist in that path, hey, go ahead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up door. 
call you. Now you have 10 friends who's gonna ask you, not one, not two. Maybe now you have 20 friends. Who is this friend taking you to drink? That friend taking you to fornication? That drink, because you look so pretty without these dresses. You know, I hate when I see Muslim sisters and they're, you know, posting some kind of pictures and they're supposed to be in the right way and their best friend who they're, Practice, sir, you think you're more practice, sir, and the commenting says, oh, you look so beautiful with that dress. With that hairstyle, you look outstanding. You're always beautiful. Instead of saying, you know, uh, you know, we could advise each other, says, let's come back, let's make tawbah, let's just, you know, protect ourselves, let's protect our body from hellfire, protect our family. Oh, your daughter looks so beautiful with that dress, really? That dress, not even Islamic dress, astaghfirullah, not even a Muslim woman can wear that dress. You know, meanwhile, the dress don't have top and I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, it hurts your feeling and you don't know how to approach these people. You don't know how to tell them, Habibi, this is not the right way. This is not the right way. You, sometimes we, we become disabled, you know, but then we say, let's be just a model for them. Let's be the righteous model. And woman, I, I don't protect them. Myself, wallahi, I'm not gonna call myself I'm better for than them, but we make dua for them, inshallah. Or if we can guide them in a different way, if we can remind them, that's why da'wah is important, also, right? That's what we're doing right now. We're just helping each other to stay on the right path, encouraging each other. You're not alone, I'm not alone, I'm in the same condition, even if it's a retired woman. If I'm retired, does not mean I'm not at work every day, so I'm not in that battle. No, there's a lot of other battles come. Obstacles stopping me, you know. SubhanAllah, this week I stopped memorizing Quran because my grandchildren here, my other daughter here, my son's grammar coming tomorrow. Uh, I told my teacher, I can't, I can't. I have to stop this 10, 15 days. I can't. What am I giving excuse myself? Am I uh, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what? My children were around me, my grandchildren were around me. I was doing right things every day. Now I have to stop, right? I feel guilty, but then I say, my excuse is just like, I don't know, I don't know. Is this excuse is gonna help or not? So we don't guarantee ourselves also. That's why we don't we don't say we are better than them, astaghfirullah, but we have to help each other, guide each other, protect each other, remind each other in a nice way. Sister, this is haram, this is halal, this is a way better. If we do it this way, inshallah, better for me, for, for your children, especially when your daughter becomes teenager and when they're gonna be, coming and practicing, when? When you allow them, or oh, when you finish college, then you can practice religion, really? When they finish college, they're opening up their own uh, apartment and they might leave your house because they don't want your rules in the house. If you have certain rules now, they don't want to listen to you. They want to go, I can't afford that. I can have my own apartment. I have my salary, I have my education. I'm going to move out. I'm going to take care of myself. That's the attitude this generation have, God forbid, right? So we have to be careful. So that's why it says terms and repentance has a lot of terms. It says three things you have to do to, to, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your tawbah. And nadam al al atidar. And nadam means you have to feel regret. Um, you know, you gotta cry over it. It's not always also. It's not to the limit to drive you insane. Oh my God, I committed sin. Every time I sit down, I can't even taste this, the food. I can't enjoy my family. Uh, um, you know, now you're having whisperation in your mind that you're going to help because you committed certain sin. It's not to that limit also, but at least you have to feel, I will never do that kind of sin ever again because that sin was not the right way. I, I will behave. I will never do that ever again. Even if I become young again, I become a young again, you have to take the oath says, Ya Allah, even if you take me back 15 years back, when I am 10 or 15 or on 20, I, met, I committed certain kind of sin, oh Allah, I'm not gonna do it because I am very, and I, I regret that. I am very sorry about that sin I committed. Well, iqla, you have to quit. Promise yourself, promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm not gonna do that kind of sin ever again. Even if I am in the same position, God forbid. And then al-i'tizar, you have to have always the apology to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it's, you took somebody else's right, you gotta apologize that person. Let's say we did gossip. How many of us will can say, oh, Sister Hawa, I took bad about you, please forgive me. How many times I can come and tell you, uh, you know, am I am I in that condition? Most of us, I'm doing the class. 
No, I'm good here. I'm okay. I have the fun. Yeah. So uh, that's why we, have, you know, many times stuff Allah. Sometimes we don't have the courage even to apologize from the people who take their right. If we take their right away from them or we steal from their business, you know, if they put you to be the trustworthy like Amina Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how much this man was you know, protected uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he told them, don't reveal the news, right? He did not. But look, if if someone says there's $10,000, it's uh, your amana. I put you in the trust of my business. Uh, how many times we hear stories of Muslim cheating each other because they were in, in business together and they steal from each other. Sometimes a family member, they steal each other from the business. They worked less, I worked harder, or I took money, I shouldn't take it. I abused my job, right? I abused the ink, the printer, the scanner, whatever personal issue we do, it's all says. There is a YouTube I was listening to, Omar uh, Abdul Kafi. Uh, it was a question that, you know, I work for a company, but I, many times I use a phone. Let's say cell phone was not exist. I use the phone of the company for my own personal phone call or my own personal use. Is that haram? He told him, indeed, that is haram. That is haram. If the owner of the company allowed you, that's a different. But if this company belongs to the government, you're not going to say, my boss allowed me. Your boss allowed you because your boss don't own the business. That's different too. So if, if you cannot say, my boss allowed me. I'm going to do it. Bismillah. Look how much sin maybe we committed once upon a time. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to be, have the ability to apologize from those people who took the right away from them and we have to quit and we have to feel regret and sorry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only verbally, but with a broken heart, especially. Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah described those people who they come apologizing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking the blame to themselves is I, I take the blame. It was my fault. Even though my boss allowed me, I shouldn't listen to myself. Astaghfirullah, ya Rabb, forgive me, ya Rabb, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, uh, he made a beautiful this dunya we live in. Uh, it's every, to everybody's heart, uh, the desire of women, we are women, desire of men, the desire of uh, having children, tons of gold and silver, you know, properties, land, right? We all work for that. But is that excuse when we go to judgment day to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, you made all this dunya so beautiful for me, so I was busy enjoying, doing, doing whatever you gave it to me. You gave me all the food, you gave me all the good things, you know, I was healthy, I was young, I have the power, I did it all, Ya Allah, you said in the Quran, is that a good excuse to return to Allah? And some people, they do that. They come to say, oh yeah, Allah gave me all this, and... I'm going to use it. Allah gave me the voice. <laughs> Imagine those people who they say, <laughs> Bismillah, and they get up and they dance in front of men. They want to dance, they want to shake because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the body to show. And they name in the name of Allah, astaghfirullah al-azim, you know, it is, it says to, to be respectful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't start with in the name of Allah by doing haram. Bismillah, and we're drinking beer. Astaghfirullah al-azim, right? Imagine somebody will say that. And those are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them, describes them, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whatever they were doing in this dunya, uh, they will say, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me all this. Allah made it so beautiful for my heart. You can't quit. I'm so pretty. I don't know. All my life, you know, we visited one old lady, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide her. I'm not guaranteeing again. But she's so sweetheart. She's so good. But she's in the mid 80s. And before I left, I have the courage to tell her, you know what, when you come to my house, I have a beautiful handmade scarf. I'm going to give it to you because this is a made from very old ancestor of me. The Circassian woman made it, but 
I'm going to give it to you because I know you will wear it when you go out with it. As she laughed, she said, oh, you want me to wear hijab? I said, yeah, because you're such a sweetheart woman and such a righteous woman. But just make tawbah for this. Don't continue knowing you know your daughters, your in-laws, they all around her, subhanAllah, wearing hijab. But the excuses for this woman says, all my life I've been doing this. I can't do it. I can't imagine. When they pray, they put the hijab. But when they go on the street, they sit outside it's just like look how pretty i am look, this is how this is the way my husband wa always wanted me your husband did make tawbah and come to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are sometimes we think it's a little small but we don't know if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds something against you could be the hijab could be the salah could be the sunan could be something you left for for a dunya pleasure we don't know we don't guarantee which one gonna bring me to to jannah just like which one to bring me to, to hellfire that for bread, right? Because the companions, all of them, the Sahabi, when they died, some other uh, you know, good friend of them, they will see them in the dream. They will tell them, tell me, tell me, how did you enter paradise? What was the reason for you to go to Jannah? How did you find uh, out the grave? And they will say, nothing helped me. Even the thousand khidmah of Quran, it didn't help me. It didn't help me that one. It didn't help me. All the debate I did between me and the disbelievers, what helped me is few ruka'ah. Few ruka'ah I did that night. That's what guaranteed me that I'm going to be in Jannah. Maybe, you know, some righteous people have dreams, which is we have to believe in that too. Uh, SubhanAllah. So we don't know. That maybe that little bit what made you to come to Jannah, maybe the other little bit what you're doing, knowing it's haram, that's a point. If you don't know, that's different. And if you didn't learn, then the, the blame on you too also, because you have to learn your fara'id, your sunan, you have to learn that. But let's say you never knew it, you couldn't learn it, it didn't come across, you died in that state, maybe, maybe that's different, maybe Allah will forgive. But knowing it's knowing it's a haram and insisting to keep doing it because some desire, some of thinking, thinking in your mind, this is okay, that it says that is no good. That is no good. That's why you have to make the sincere tawbah and feel, feel solely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ زَيِّنَ لِكَثِيرِ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قَتْلَ أُولَادِهِمْ شُرَكَاؤُهُمْ Allah Akbar, we don't even reach to uh, kill the baby who's not born yet. He قَتْلَ أُولَادِهِمْ does not mean uh, you kill your own children and you go to hell. Maybe the abortion here forbidden in Islam for no reason. So then that is زَيِّنَ لِكَثِيرِ it's 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 fine for you know the woman ha, she 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 has a right it's her body right today you have all the debate about uh, abortion even politically some people they say let the woman decide it's her body really you can't just decide because it's your body because Allah subhanahu wa taala says give you a manna if you have a baby that's a trust from Allah subhanahu wa taala and that baby the the father all also have a right in that baby that's why it's very very dangerous to take upon yourself, say, I want to go and do abortion without consult, taking consultant to a scholars or, or you know, Islamic view. Uh, this is clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It's beautifying their hearts. It's easy to kill your children before they born. And that's in Surah uh, Al-An'am. SubhanAllah. Uh, uh, says, uh, الحديث, the Prophet says, The Prophet said, I was sent to be Hadi. I am here to show you the right way. If you stay away from the Sunnah, that's when you get lost. I am there, so follow me. That's why it's very important to understand the Sirat al Rasul, Sunnat al Rasul. You follow somebody else, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. I am there, Hadi and he preach us, he's our al-mu'allim, he's our teacher, and we gotta follow that. وَلَيْسَ إِلَى وَلَيْسَ إِلَى Sorry, I can't read. وَلَيْسَ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الضَّلَالَةِ شَيْءٍ وَلَيْسَ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الضَّلَالَةِ شَيْءٍ Sorry, uh, I'm gonna read the hadith all in Arabic. بُعِثْتُ هَادِيًا وَدَاعِيًا وَلَيْسَ إِلَيَّ مِنَ الْهِدَايَةِ الشَّيْءٍ وَبُعِثَ إِبْلِيسُ مُغْوِيًا وَمُزَيِّنًا وَلَيْسَ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الضَّلَالَةِ شَيْءٍ Allahu Akbar. This is, this is so 
Arabic language so strong. It says, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I was sent to be the Hadi, the one who's gonna guide you in the Surah Al-Mustaqim and to preach you, to bring you to the Da'wah, right? He is a Da'i, he is the one who called us. Even the word of the Quran we read in it came through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he said, Wala min al He's not the one who will guide you. He will tell you the guide. That's why I'm not the one who guiding my children. I will tell them this is the way to come to the righteous way. So don't take, oh, so-and-so came to Islam through me. Really? How do you know? I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to claim. The Prophet didn't claim the Hidayah to himself. I'm not the one who's guiding. Allah the one who guides. But I am the dying. I show you, hey, this is a straight path. If you follow, Allah helped you to come. If you went the wrong way, you didn't listen to me to be saved. So you just obey me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're lost. And same with Iblis. Iblis, Iblis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, when he said, let me live to astray your servants, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, go ahead, astray them. So when he astrays them, it says, وَلَيْسَ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الضَّلَالِةِ شَيْءٍ it's not up to Iblis for you to be astray. He will whisper in you. He will show you the wrong path. But if when you follow the wrong path, it's not he's the one who caused you that. Do you understand? That is really powerful. At the end of the day, who is a guide? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yahdi man yasha. And if you listen to the devil, it's not the devil made you to get lost, but because you listen to the devil, Allah will make you lost. If you listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you obey him, because you did that, it's not the prophet who guided you, it's Allah the one who guided you. That's why we say, ihdina, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not ihdini ya Muhammad, or oh, Muhammad guide me. Or oh, Muhammad guide me is different meaning when I ask somebody on the street, oh, can you tell me where's the main street? He might tell me where's the main street and I go, yes, that was a street, that was the right way. Does not mean he's the one who, who guided me. He told me the truth. Then I follow the truth, I find myself, I am there. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps me. That's why the hidayah come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So neither Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam take the claim, claim, neither Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam claim the hidayah, it's come from him, it's his power, it's his magic, no. Neither any other prophets. Same with Iblis. Neither Iblis takes the, uh, you know, the claim, oh, I astrayed you. I have some. In judgment day, he's going to say, Laysa li alaykum. I, I did not, I did not, I did not force you. I just told you, I whispered in you. La talumuni lumu anfusikum. Ma ana bimusrikum wa na antum bimusrikhi. That's what he, he will say, say in judgment day. I did not control you, neither you controlled me. I whispered in you, I told you, and you followed me. So take, take the blame. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them all together in the hellfire, says, you could fight there. You could fight, you could blame each other. It's not going to help. So the, the, the game of blame in judgment day, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Allahu Akbar. One more things, and we're going to stop. Haqqaiq at says, how do I know now? Uh, how am going to maximize the, uh, the felony? If I say ta'zim al jinaya, if I maximize my follow me, if I maximize my sin, then I say, oh my God, even though it's a lie, it's a, you could call it white lie, right? If it's a lie, it's a lie. I have to maximize that sin. I have to say, what if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put my name into the column of al kadhabin Then in judgment day, I resurrected with the liars. Then I'm lost. That's why it says when you make a sin, just maximize that sin. So you can become, maximize the majestic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your eyes. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shadid al iqab what if he doesn't forgive me now? That's why it says you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a broken heart, with a humiliation, right? Crying over your sin and sincerely come to him and you say, my sin indeed was big. Even in your eyes, it's not the major sin. It's not the seven deadly, they call them dead sinner or whatever, right? Guarantee you to go to a hellfire, but you don't know because God forbid, who wants to go live 1,000 years in hellfire and then come to paradise? None of us. 
you know, there is ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah where the people of uh, Bani Israel, when Musa alayhi salam told them, you know, you have to make the sincere tawbah, you got to go to heaven. What does they say? Oh, the punishment of Allah is just a day or so, few days in hellfire. We're going to go there a few days and we're going to come out and we'll be in Jannah. That's what they said. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment is a short time. How do you know? How do you guarantee that? Even if you guarantee that, even if you know that when qala la ilaha illallah dakhal al-jannah, who one of us will be in hellfire for 100 years or 1,000 years, or even for one day? It says if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yawm al-ghamus, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dipped one human being who they have the best life in their life, everything was perfect the way they want. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds that human being and they dip them in hellfire, one dip and take it out and they come out, Dark faham, like burn in, in that one dip, they become out burn like a chicken. And Allah will ask them, Did you see any day any happen, happiness in your life? And we'll say, No. Five minutes. Give me five minutes. Yeah. So they will say, Oh Allah, we never have a good time in our life. That's how the Jahannam is not easy. It's not easy to wish just for a few days, few months, few years to stay there and come here. I just want to be happy now. Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabb. Hashalillah, Ya Rabb. Ya Allah, adkhilna jannah min ghayri sabiqati hisaban wal aiqab. Oh Allah, give us paradise without any punishment and without any uh, account even. Just fly on Sirat al-Mustaqim in the day of judgment, the way we are trying to fly on the Sirat al-Mustaqim in this dunya. We are in a race today. You know, we want to pass each other to be a, a good leaders, a, a, a righteous person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. He said, you could slow down everywhere. It says, slow down, slow down, slow down. Except when you come to ask the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, sabihu ila maghfira. Race. I'm going to say more istighfar than my sister Malika, or Malika is going to say, I'm going to do more istighfar than sister Madiha. That's the race, that's a good race Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in, insha'Allah ta'ala. Wishing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our, our dua, uh, we sincerely use some of those ad'iyah we learn from, you know, the sunnah, sirat, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how we, you know, cry over our sin using the supplication written in English, if you don't speak the Arabic, you know, read them in English, make sincere tawbah, I make sincere tawbah for myself, for each other, for Muslim ummah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to forgive you and forgive me, and always if I made anything right from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if anything was wrong, and I took too much time, it's from me, I'm so sorry. Uh, may Allah forgive us and show us the right path. May Allah put us in a, in a loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only, not for this dunya, not for any of these uh, desires of the dunya, just the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa